Well, hello, everyone. Really happy to be here. Um, and I can relate also very much to what Dan has just said, um, because through my life I have been quite a people pleaser. Um, and I've had to learn, you know, not to burn myself out and to, uh, to be able to give, but to be able to charge my batteries and be aware of it as well, um, of my own energy levels and, and how much I give. So to tell you a bit about me, can you all hear me okay? All okay at the back? Um, so as I mentioned, I'm passionate about helping people and um, with my work, what I do at Thrive Coaching and Training is help people be the best that they can be. So it's all about helping you to find your real purpose, what your real dreams are, and helping you to fulfil those and go beyond as well what you might have imagined you could actually achieve. So that's my passion. Um, other things I would just like to tell you about me, you'd like to know who am I. So um, as a person, as I say, I'm passionate about helping people. Um, I'm also um, a... Uh, a lead trainer with the Mo Foundation, and I don't know how many, I think a few of you here have done the Mo course, uh, which is a coaching course. We've got another course coming up at the end of October, and it's very beneficial for anyone that's doing it. And it's uh, basically, it's a non-profit and helping lots of people in Guernsey. We've already trained about 120 people through the course in Guernsey now. So you will learn great skills through that too. And I'm also a co-organiser of the Mo Conference, um, sorry, the Social Enterprise Success Conference, which happened in May this year. And our next one is going to be in South Africa in June. So we're hoping to do one on each continent. So that's seven conferences. And the aim of that is to transform lives through enterprise. So it's helping businesses to help people and transform their lives. So that's a bit about me, but I'd like to um, share. I've got lots of things to share with you today. <clears throat> but first of all, I'd like to say that I was almost never here. And the reason I was almost never here is because I was terrified of public speaking. I had a real phobia. And when I was working for British Airways, um, I was working in customer services, and I had a manager who really believed in me, and there's a job that came up in the training department. And I said, no, that's not for me. My, you know, if I had to do a presentation or anything, my legs would be shaking, and I, I wouldn't sleep for nights, you know, in advance. So when she said to me, would you like to join the training department, I said, no, not me, that's not for me. She believed in me, and so the rest is history. I took that job, I got that job, I trained with British Airways, and that is now um, over 20 years ago, and here I am today talking to you. So if it hadn't been for one person who believed in me, I probably wouldn't have been here. Yeah, obviously my parents always believed in me. Um, we, it really helps, you know, just one person in your life can make such a change and such a difference. So it's a little bit like Sliding Doors, the movie. How many of you have seen the movie Sliding Doors? Yeah. One little moment in time can change everything. And so hopefully today, with all the great speakers that they've got lined up to talk to you today, it'll be like a sliding doors journey for you all. That you're all going to be able to change something amazing in your lives. Yeah? Okay, so what is assertiveness then? We hear this word a lot, and it often gets confused um, what it actually is. So that's what we're going to look at. So it's assertive behavior is where you stand up for your own rights, but you do it in such a way that you're not violating the rights of other people. We all have rights. So we stand up for ourselves in such a way. So how does aggressive behavior then compare with assertive behavior? So that often gets really confused. And when I was first doing my assertiveness course and I was searching on Google for images for assertive behavior, I was really surprised how many images there were for aggressive behavior. And you'll often hear people say, oh, they were very assertive with me. They probably were not being assertive. Because if you're being assertive, it's very neutral. Yeah, it's very neutral and it's not aggressive. So, when you're being aggressive, it focuses on saying what you want and what you need at the expense of other people. That's the difference. 
Okay, and then passive behaviour, where we are perhaps a bit shy or we just stand back and don't take any control over what we're, what we're doing. We don't have much control over our destiny. So passive behaviour focuses on the opinions, feelings and wants being withheld altogether. So that's passive behaviour. Now there's another kind of behaviour. Can anyone shout out what that might be? Yes, passive-aggressive. So passive-aggressive behaviour is a bit like this. That says it all, a bit like the smiling assassin, yeah? So basically, when you're being passive-aggressive, you're not expressing what you really think, but it's seeping out in other ways, very covert. So it's very inauthentic, this kind of behaviour. So, and it can be a little bit like the pressure cooker syndrome, where things build up and then explode. Yeah? So, that's passive aggressive. So, I'm going to share with you 10 tools today. Um, so, in 10 tools of assertive behavior that are going to be able to help you to alleviate stress. So, here's your first tool the sphere of influence. How many of you have come across this before? Yeah, sphere of influence. Um, sphere of influence is all about the degree of control and influence that we have in our lives. And this is a really useful tool. You can just keep this in your, in your head. So in the middle, in that green circle in the middle, is everything that we can control in our lives. And the second one, which is the turquoise circle, circle is everything that we can influence. So we may not be able to control it, but we can influence it. And then what do you think this one is? Everything that we can't control. This is where all the what-ifs live. What if this happens? What if that happens? So all, all the worrying happens there. So where does all our energy go? It gets dissipated into the unknown because we really don't know what's going to happen here. So that's where the what-ifs live. So proactive and assertive people will spend most of their time in the turquoise circle here because they will be focused more on what they can do. Yeah? Um, and whereas reactive people or the warriors are going to be living in the purple zone, which is where we don't want to be because we're wasting our energy by being there. So the power of communication is key when it comes to assertiveness. And this really helps us when we are um, in difficult, stressful situations. So I'd like to share the second tool here. Now, some of you may be familiar with this one. Um, but how much out of 100% do you think our words have impact on us? Guesses? Just shout 100. out. 100? You think words are 100%? OK. Any advances on that? 10? OK. Right. And then what about our tone of voice? How much influence does our tone of voice have on other people? 70%. 70. 70%, 70 okay. And what about our nonverbal communication, our body language, hand gestures, facial expressions, these kind of things? How much impact do they have out of 100%? Even more. Even more. <laughs> 50%. It's a lot more than we realize. And this is actually the findings of a study done by Dr. Albert Morabian. There have been other studies done as well, but this is the most widely used. And it's actually 7% influence that our words have when we're having a conversation. Tone of voice is 38%, and body language is a whopping 55%. So it's huge, isn't it? And there's Ricky demonstrating. <laughs> So, for instance, if I was to say to you now, OK, if you need to use the bathrooms, you go to your right and the bathrooms are that way. So, what are you going to think? You're going to think that the bathrooms are that way, right? Not to your right. Yeah. OK. <laughs> so, <clears throat> here's your third tool now. Words. Now, there's one little word that's a very, very powerful word, and it's an assertive. It's the hallmark of assertiveness. Has anybody got any idea what that word is? 
No, that's, that's a good one. We're going to come to that, but that is a good one. But it's not that one I'm going to talk about now. Okay. It's actually I. The power of using I. We are so often used to saying you, you this, you that, you done this, you're doing that. But actually, that's quite aggressive, or it can be quite aggressive. To be assertive, you're owning what you say. So I believe, or I'd like, or I'm feeling, that's assertive. Using I is very powerful, and avoiding starting sentences with you. So these are the most powerful statements you can make. You're affirming who you are and what you want, and using I is the hallmark of assertiveness. Tone of voice. Again, this has a huge impact doesn't it? Because we can see 38% tone of voice. And bear in mind that over the phone, we don't have body language, and yet we can still hear a smile on the phone, right? We know if somebody's distracted when we're talking to them, we can tell from their tone of voice. So very important. And face-to-face -face conversations too. Tone of voice is a whole different area um, as well and if any of you sing you'll know there's quite a lot to it. Okay so out of this image here for example just notice what you see. There's no right or wrong answers here um, but just notice what you see here. We will within split seconds we will make assumptions about what's happening in this scenario. There's no words and there's no tone of voice but already we're deciding what's going on here. Yeah, and everyone probably has their own interpretation of that as well. Okay, what does this symbol mean to you? Okay. Okay. Yeah? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Now, we believe that's quite a universal symbol, don't we? So, in the US and in the West, it means good job, okay, as you've all said. In Germany, they use it to say the number one. In Japan, it means the number five. In Ghana, it's an insult to use the thumb. And in Malaysia, the thumb is used to point rather than the finger. So we can assume that the thumbs up is a universal symbol, but actually it's, it's uh, not necessarily. It's good to be aware of it. So here's your fourth tool now. Listening. What is effective listening? It's a huge subject in itself. But how many of you feel that you've really, really been listened to in the last week? Any of you that have gone on Mo will be very familiar with this on the Mo coaching course. So it's a key skill when it comes to assertiveness and I would really advise you to learn as much as you can about learning to listen well. Many of us think we're good listeners but we're interrupting people, we're giving advice when it's not been asked for, we're hijacking the conversation and making it about us. That happens all the time and that's not real listening. And another really important point is um, the next one that we're going to get to but first of all when you're listening, you want to maintain good eye contact, open, positive body language, gaining awareness from seeing people's body language, helping us to understand what's going on a lot better, keeping an open mind, listening without interrupting to put your point across, and summarizing and asking for clarification. So for instance, saying, did I hear this correctly? I'd just like to check that I've understood this correctly. Yeah, that's good listening. So your fifth tool here is about questions. Um, and questioning is a very important part of assertiveness because assertive behavior is all about listening to the other person, asking the right questions, and building a rapport. We can alleviate a lot of stress and a lot of assumptions by asking good questions. So you'll know probably about closed questions, yes or no answer. There is a place for those if we need a direct answer. Um, open questions are all of these. The what, where, when, how, and who. You'll probably notice there's one question that's not on there, and that's why. Why, use with caution. 
If I say to someone, why are you wearing that shirt today? Yeah? Sounds judgmental. Why did you do it that way? Why didn't you do it that way? Sounds very judgmental. Yeah? So avoid why. It's okay if I use it in a situation like this because I'm throwing it open to the whole group. And no leading questions. You will do that for me, won't you? That's very manipulative and actually aggressive. And non-judgmental, avoid why. Very important. So your sixth tool now is dealing with conflict. This is a huge subject in itself. And I could probably spend a whole day talking to you about this one. There's lots of things that we can learn about dealing with conflict. But I'd just like to share this tool with you, which is all about my attitude affects my behavior. And my behavior is going to affect your attitude. And your attitude affects your behavior, which in turn affects my attitude. So if we have a positive attitude, this is going to influence, and again, going back to our circle of influence, it's going to influence our situation. If we have a negative attitude, this is going to affect the other person. And this is a very useful tool to keep in your mind. Again, it's so simple, you can just remember this one. So, assertiveness is a learned behavior. It's something we choose. It's a learned behavior. We start to learn it from about 10 months old because we have caregivers, parents who are role modeling this behavior to us. So we get to learn it. So, if we stay in a positive state of mind and a, a positive or staying assertive in a conflict situation, it's very difficult for the other person to continue being in a negative frame of mind. Because if we remain positive, they're going to feel pretty stupid, aren't they, if they carry on. So if we can stay calm, assertiveness is all about calm, using I and listening, asking the right questions, and then being able to put your state, your state your point as well by saying, I'm not comfortable with that, to be honest. Um, I would rather do this. Yeah? Don't even have to apologize. I'm really sorry. No. Because that will actually be more passive. To actually be OK with saying calmly, I'm really not comfortable to do that. OK. So it's focused on the current reality, remaining objective, asking questions and gathering information. And it's a role of care, concern, respect, responsibility, and maturity. Your seventh tool now, the assertive triangle, which really shows you, as you can see, on the left, passive versus aggressive. Um, you've got the area of choice above the line. This is because we choose assertive behavior. The more we choose it, the more natural it becomes. Your eighth tool now, it's about being heard. If you're in a situation, perhaps a meeting at work and you can't be heard or you don't feel heard, very useful technique and a tip I'm going to share with you. Because we know body language is so powerful, we just gently raise our arm and we say, can I add something to that? By asking, can I add something to that, we're not making negative what the person before has said. Yeah? We're actually adding to it. And nine times out of ten, people will say, sure, go ahead, because you're not interrupting them. And you've asked permission to put your point across. Very good tip to use. OK, your ninth tool now is about the art of saying no, which is what this lady here mentioned earlier on. How many of you find it difficult to say no? Yeah, it can be very difficult, can't it? So, there is a technique to it, the art of saying no. So, this is a list to consult before saying yes. So, before you say yes, you can ask yourself, do I really want this or am I pleasing someone? Um, how do I feel about this request, honestly? If I do, will I enjoy it? What's the cost, if any, of saying no? Do I have to decide now or can I take time to think? Or is there another alternative? Um, or do I need more information before I decide? So a list to consult. So how to say no. This is the other thing, isn't it? Some tips here. Just say no. There's no need to say because or I'm sorry, right? I would really like to, but what does but mean? Everything that precedes but is 
Bullshit? Yeah? How many of you can hear a butt coming? You know, so um, everything, so avoid butts. And I'm sorry, but, yeah, it weakens your argument. Give an explanation of your feelings. For example, I'd feel uncomfortable to do that. Um, give an explanation of your reasons because I'm already committed. If appropriate, thank them. And if anyone wants any copies of these slides, very happy if you want to talk to the organisers here. Tenth Tool is about the learning journey. We go through a journey of not knowing what we don't know, to knowing that we don't know it on the second step. The third step is, yeah, I know I'm, I know I can do it, but I can't do it yet. Um, and then unconscious competence is where it becomes automatic. OK, so these are the 10 tools here that I've just shared with you. And as I say, if you want any copies of these slides, then please ask and we'll get them to you. OK. Lots of for you to take away in your toolbox. So remember, your new, your new journey starts today. It's your sliding door story. I'd like to invite you to all stand up, just for a moment. All stand up. Okay. Put your hands on your hips. Take a deep breath. And say, I am awesome. <laughs>